Hi again, it's Bob here from Insidium. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you a cool technique on how you can create a realistic looking large scale ocean. We'll do more than that though. I'll show you how we can get that to infinitely loop and also how we can stop getting any repeated wave patterns in the noise. So let's jump into Cinema 4D. We're going to be using XP Ocean. Let's get started. Let's go to our Insidium menu then, X Particles, we'll go to the Generators menu and bring in an XP Ocean. Here it is in our scene, and if we hit play, you're going to see that we're getting this kind of animated water look. So that's looking okay. So what we want to do is, first of all, let's hit NB to show the lines, and we can see that we have a fair few polygons but it's not particularly detailed so we're going to be able to generate much more detail in this ocean if we have a greater resolution of polygons so we can go to our width segments and our height segment let's put it on say 200 a piece and now if we hit na to hide the lines it's much more detailed now it's a little bit kind of frenetic at the moment this isn't it isn't what we want we want a much larger scale look to our ocean so let's go to our settings and we'll get that sorted first of all we're going to massively increase the wind speed which is going to kind of simulate kind of gale force winds and we're going to get a much more kind of huge swell of water animating through our scene so we've done that let's now increase the wave height a little bit that's looking cool. We're going to reduce the time scales. So this isn't animating quite as quickly. Something like that. And now what we can do, this is using a Tessendorf noise to generate these animated waves. We can increase the resolution of that underlying noise. Let's put it on, say, 256, and you're going to see more detail in that noise. Let's just exaggerate that. We'll put it on 512. We get even more detail, but you can see that it considerably slows down our simulation, the playing in our viewport. So let's just put that down. You want a nice middle ground, 256 is giving us good detail, but we're getting good playback as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to explore choppiness. Now if we increase the choppiness, it's going to stretch out this noise. Look, and it's kind of gathering it in at the highest points. If we go too far, it totally breaks the mesh. But if we just bring this choppiness up to the point where it's just about to start folding in on itself, and it's creating a really nice um, a bit of detail. So now let's just have a look at damping and wind direction. So if we reduce this damping amount completely, put it on zero, you're going to see that there's no kind of current going on here. The water is just reflecting back and forth as if it was in a closed container. If we add some damping, and we put the damping on full in fact, you'll see that, look, we're getting the full strength wind direction and now we've kind of simulated this really strong current going along the plus z if we change the wind direction we can change that look it's going down now now it's going to the left um, and so on so now what we want to do so we want this current but we'll just reduce it so we have a little bit of those reflections which is going to add a little bit more realism to the movement of our water Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. First, before we start making this look more interesting, we're going to loop it. So if you see, when our playhead gets to the end of our 180 frames, um, obviously it snaps. We haven't got a looping animation here. There you go. But we can loop this. All we need to do is go and activate looping. And then the loop time just needs to be one frame after your final frame. So 181. And now that means if you keep an eye on the playhead, when it gets back and loops back to the beginning, we've got a perfect loop. Excellent. So now that we've got that, look, if we go to our material manager here, we've got this ocean material that's got a bit of reflection. It's got some bump in there, and that's giving us this pretty nice looking ocean. But we've got a slight problem in our current setup. If we increase the scale by dragging out the handles of our XP ocean, very quickly it starts to get too repetitive it looks all of the same when we're trying to simulate this big ocean so what can we do well here is a brilliant trick in its default mode our xp ocean if we go to the settings is in primitive and it generates the 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 ocean but we can also use this as a deformer 
So what we're going to do is this. We're going to duplicate our original ocean. And we're going to switch off the original. This is our new one. And this new one, we're going to make some smooth, large, bumpy detail. So to do that, look, let's reduce the resolution down to, say, 128. Let's increase the smallest wave value, which will smoothen this out a lot. Let's massively increase the ocean size, something like this. We can increase that wave height. Add a bit of choppiness. And then let's just hit play. So now we've got a very different, larger looping ocean. We could increase this wind speed, maybe. That's looking good. Maybe increase the time scale a bit. No, that's too much. Reduce that time scale back down again. So now, what if we were able to deform our original XP Ocean with this new one? Well, we can. All we need to do is set the type to deformer. It disappears because it's no longer generating anything. Let's activate our original ocean. We'll make the new deformer ocean a child. And now we're going to get some animated secondary movement, which will be different in different parts of this ocean, which will get rid of that real kind of repetitive feel to the noise. And obviously you can layer up as many of these additional deformers as you like. And there we go. We've got a looping, large scale, really nice animating ocean in our viewport set up pretty easily using the fantastic XP Ocean.